Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I wanna share with you some little journals that I've been making, or junk journals. <clears throat> These are two and a quarter inches wide by three inches tall, and they have four papers folded in half, so that makes 16 pages that are inside. They have a closure that's just tied on, and then there is a pocket on the inside and a journaling card inside the envelope. These have been sprayed with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and I've sewn all the way around and there's another pocket in the back. So let me show you how I make these journals. One moment. The first thing that I'm going to do is I have some cardstock. This was some scraps that were in a uh, grab bag, if you will, from Canvas Court Brands. And I've already measured out what I'm supposed to make the size, and I've just found that I can trim a portion of this off. Oops, it slid. Trim a portion of this off, and then it becomes the cover and a journaling card for the inside. So I've got these two pieces that I've made. I've got my spray box here, and let me zoom out so you can see a little better. My spray box is just, well, it says Dulcie and Gabbana the One. So this was a perfume and body lotion fragrance pen that I got a long time ago. It just so happens this fits an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and it fits in a drawer really handy so I could keep it near me when I need it. So I've got my stencil that I made and as you can see I've had this for a while and I've used it a lot and it doesn't hurt it for it to be dirty. I'm going to lay in here a page out of a dictionary and then I'll lay the stencil on top. And then I've got a few colors of Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I have Pale Lavender, Fully Purple, and Pop Rock. So these are the colors that I'm going to use. I'm going to start with the lightest color first and spritz that over the whole piece and then I'm going to use Pop Rocks and then I'll use Fully Purple. This is my mop-up sheet but it's also perforated paper that I got from my old job where I used to work and this was for a special project but the paper was wrong and so they were going to throw these away. And I already saw them. I thought, well, this would be cool. I can do something with that. So this is what I've got so far. So there was some red on the stencil. So that's why this has a lot of red in it, which I'm okay with. I think it looks kind of cool. And then here is the piece that'll be for my cover of my little journal. I'm going to set this aside to dry. And then I want a pocket. So I found if I made a two and a half inch wide strip, the height or length of the book and it becomes a great pocket. So I'm just going to lay this in here and I'm going to spray it just like I did the cover. And then I have a couple of the little cards that I cut off. So I'm just putting them in the spray so it picks up some of the spray. And I'm going to do the other side of this mop-up page or my pages that are going to be in my journal. So now it's got something on both sides, and we've got this strip. So what I like to do is take my heat tool, and I will dry these really quick-like. If you're not in a big hurry, you can let them air dry, but since I'm doing a video, I will heat tool them and dry them just a little bit. Since this page is perforated, I'm going to tear it apart. Now, since you probably don't have a perforated piece of paper, basically I cut this into eight pieces. So you could take it eight and a half by 11 and cut it in half, and then take those pieces and cut them in half until you end up with a bunch of little pages like I have here. So there's my little pages for my little mini books and I found that if I go ahead and fold these, have them all ready, that when I go to put the pages in the book it goes a lot faster. 
So the next thing I do is I take my book page and I'm going to turn it over to the back side. And I'm going to take the larger pieces. These are my, my cover insides. And I'll just put some Aline's Tacky Glue right around the perimeter. Kind of make a zigzag. And then I found that if I just line it up with the text on the page, that it makes it easy to make sure this is somewhat straight when I go to finish covering this journal cover. Then I'll use my bone folder and just press over the glue to help make sure that that's spread all over. Then I'll just take my scissors and cut it in half. And I'll cut off the ends. I've been saving the ends so I can do another project with them later. And then I just take my glue gun, or glue stick, and I'll show you a little closer here. So I just take my glue stick and I'm going to go right over the corner. And then I'm going to fold this down to the inside. I'm going to do that on all four corners. And then I'll just go down the sides and glue this over. I'm using glue stick on this thin paper because it's just that it's thin. And I plan to go to the sewing machine and so I don't want a lot of glue that's all wet to sew on top of. I want it to dry pretty quick. And this seems to dry pretty fast. So here's my cover pieces. The next thing that I want to do is take this piece of book page that I sprayed. I'm going to cut or fold it in half lengthwise. I was told that this is called hot dog style. <laughs> and then I'm going to fold it in half hamburger style as they say. And I'm going to use this crease to cut. And then I cut just a smidge off each end. And again, the reason why I did that is just so that it fits onto my journal cover that I've made here. And this will fit here. And then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and zigzag stitch all the way around. So I'll show you that in just a moment. So I've got my cover piece and what's going to be my pocket. And I've lined it up to the bottom. So it's lined up all the way across the bottom here. And then I'm going to zigzag stitch all the way around. So I'm going to just make sure that my machine is set on zigzag. I'm going to place this up underneath the presser foot. I found that if I leave a little bit of a gap over here on the side, then I know that I'm getting it pretty close to the edge. And then I'm just going to zigzag stitch around. When I get to the end, I want to make sure that the needle is in the right position. Then I can raise my presser foot and rotate. Now when I sew my machine, the needle stays down. Yours may not. So all you got to do is just make sure when you're stitching to leave the needle down and then you can rotate it. Once I have this folded or sewn all the way around, I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to make sure that I push that pocket in so it doesn't buckle. And then I'm just going to crease this slightly. So there's my page, or my book cover. And then I'm going to take the pages. They're already folded. I'm going to line them up in the center of my cover. And then I'm going to use a paper clip to hold that in place. And then I'm going to do a straight stitch right down the center here. So that's stitched right down the center and then this will fold in half and become my book. So let me finish the other one and then we'll switch views. Well here's the journal when it was sewed down the center. Here's the outside of it and then I'm just going to fold that close. I've got little tiny envelopes here and I've got my distress ink. This one is Dusty Cold Cord. So I'm just going to go around the envelope and add some color. These are the little journal cards that I made by mopping up. So I'm just going to fold those in half. And then one will go inside each of these little envelopes and in the front cover. 
so that fits just right inside there. And then using my giant paper clips again, I'm gonna paper clip these closed. And then I have some crochet thread. That's what this is, just in white. And just so I know how much I need, I usually wrap it around and start to tie a bow. So it looks like if I cut this right about there, and I need two of them, so I'm just doubling over the string. And I'm gonna cut this. And I've got my ink pad here, and I've got a distressing tool, and I want to color this string to match my journal. So I'm just gonna lay this on here, a little bit away from the edge. And I found if I take the string and kind of rotate it back and forth and pull it across that ink pad with the distressing tool on top, it adds color, Let's see if I can get that to focus, onto my string. So I'm gonna do that probably a couple of times to get a good saturation. So I'll take this string and cut it in half, and I'll use one to, set, to tie the little journal closed. I found that if I put the paper clip onto the journal, when I go to tie it close, because it's taking the pressure of this journal wanting to pop open off of the string, it's easier to get a little snugger tie onto the string. You like the way this turned out? Is it a cute little journal that you could make at home? I thought it was pretty clever because I was using some things I had and probably couldn't use for other things, and I ended up making 20 of these little journals. So I've got some in pink. We have some in blue. A teal color. A yellow. Orange. Red. Brown with a touch of pink. Kind of a purpley pink. This is a green and purple mix. And then here are the purple ones that I made. Do you like that idea? I thought it was fun, it was easy. Um, great way to use up some of these old book pages that you may have, and then possibly even for the inside, if you don't have the paper that I have, you could use copy paper. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that others can find the goodness that I share here. If you have any comments, use that comment box below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I share lots of cool things every so often, at least every Saturday, there's a new video on my channel. Thanks so much everybody for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.